And this video, we're going to go from a creaky data model to, uh, um, to, to broken promises and technical difficulties. Um, so yeah, hopefully not just about the model creaking. <laughs> No. Yeah. You're not having technical difficulties with the slides, are you? Always technical difficulties. Right, so how do we have to put this off? Give it a moment. Right. Does it work? Yeah, cool. Okay, Ilya. So, the sound. Right. Hello, everyone, again. I am Ilya Zverev, and uh, basically, all I want from OpenStreetMap now is to follow edits around me and uh, have a means to revert them. It's not, it doesn't seem like a hard task to do. We already has reverting tools. And, but it doesn't seem quite simple now. Like how many of you are comfortable reverting change sets now? Cool. <laughs> Mostly data working group, right? So, the thing is, uh, API 0.6, 10 years ago, was made partially with thought of making reverting things easy. But I don't think it is there yet. So maybe we can somehow improve things to, uh, because reverts are really needed now, uh, not by just uh, individual mappers, but by companies, because opposite map is used by so many companies and people around the world. And we need to follow the map more closely. So how do we do that? How do we do, how do we make reverts and monitoring changes easier? The first thing that comes to mind is changing our API. And API is basically uh, two things in one. The first one being a data model. Uh, you know, nodes, ways, relation, tags, that's our data model. Uh, it has been there since the beginning of the project, I guess. And uh, people often think about what would we want for the next API? Like, why, what do we need for API 0.7? This is not that talk, but I will touch on some of these things. Like, uh, the common things that people list are pretty simple from an outsider's point of view, like areas, locations, or ways. These are things that would simplify a lot working with our data for data consumers. The thing is, uh, these suggestions look like, like we need to make our data model simpler, closer to or just see simple features, like there are polygons, line strings, uh, all self-contained. It would be so simple to process them because every other tool uses simple features. But that doesn't account for what we already have. We don't actually need simple features because things we do have now, they already work. We know how to tell closed ways from polygons. We can build multi-polygons from data we have, and thanks to Johan, well, we now have a single working model for multi-polygons. Yes, it takes quite a lot of memory to do that, but I won't say there are things that are not possible without turning to simple features. We need to think more about what we have. Open system model is different. We need to underline its strength to make better use for what we already have. 
like in the data model, in our data model, everything is connected to everything. You know, like nodes connected to ways, everything's connected to relations, and the whole data model is just this one big ball of geodata. It is hard to untangle, but it allows us to do stuff that no other data model could allow. So, uh, we can uh, underlie strain by improving our data model in ways that makes it easier to use, for example, like enforcing references. Right now, we have ways that reference nodes, but we also can, uh, we, we should make nodes reference ways, so, which would solve a lot of issues, like incomplete downloads, like conflicts on editing, well, a lot of this. This is just an example of change, but since we have things connected to each other, why not make that connection obvious, explicit? And then object versions. They obviously don't work, like Johan shown last year. Like, uh, for example, a way, a part of a road, can change its geom geometry many times between inside a single version. Because when a node or a way is moved, the way stays the same with the same version. And that makes reverting very tedious because you don't use versions for that. Suddenly you find yourself using timestamps and that like versions don't help anything at all. So, uh, we also can fix this, that from the data model. Like, make things explicit. Like, on each uh, geometry change, increase uh, way version number or something, or reference nodes of, with complete versions, concrete versions. So. so, these are examples of things that we can do to enforce our uh, specialty as data model. But then, nobody has yet changed to API 07, and there are quite uh, obvious reasons for that, because it is pretty hard. It was hard last time. Like 10 years ago, uh, it wasn't just a single person who made all the work. It was like a dozen people working for half a year. Most of them were paid to do it, and this was all this big joint effort to do a new API version, and it won't be easier the next time. It, it will be even harder, because since, because just finding people who know how to uh, touch CGI map, ID, JOSM, Railsport, or SMTP JSQL, how to implement stuff in this is hard. Paying developers is not hard. Uh, it will take like 100,000 euros for SMF has that kind of money. This conference is not much cheaper. Uh, but then, if you find developers, then you have to plan all the things. And I believe most of you have the idea what to do for a P.7. And these are different ideas. Making a coherent plan out of that is hard. And then people who were in opposite map 10, 15 years ago are still there. They maintain our infrastructure and they know the most important thing in engineering is that if it does work, don't change it. Most of them are pretty content with what you have now and pathing the changes through them might be quite hard. So we might look for other ways. Look at the API not as data model, but as interface. In the past 10 years, since we have API 06, a lot has changed in the API. We got change at discussions, nodes, uh, uh, redactions, moderation queue, many other changes. That was all added without increasing API number. And if you look at these things, how they are built inside, they're API is very messy with different formats, especially opposite web nodes. You can ask Andy, uh, he has a lot of stories about that. 
And that is a good thing. That means that you don't have to make a new interfaces perfect to them, for them to be accepted into the core. You just have to make them work. So what can we do to simplify reverting stuff and monitoring changes? Pretty obvious things. Some of them are already there, like finding deleted objects. Potlatch could do it, and now we cannot. Now to undelete a single way, we have to make like a thousand requests to SM API for a full history. It shouldn't be so. It should be just a couple requests. It's almost impossible to find what's been deleted now. And the history should be more accessible. Now we get only the latest versions of everything. And it's hard to query the history of uh, complex objects, ways, relations uh, with the, for the previous states. Because again, versions don't work. There has to be timestamps. And we need to get the whole tree of changes, and it's hard. But the data is still in the database. These interfaces are just a means to access the database of OpenStreetMap. And we can get the data. We can write SQL queries to get the data, provide them to users. It might be hard, but it's doable. We can get history for a region. We can have better history like uh, on the OSM website. And that would make reverting easier because when you have history, you can revert to any point in the history. And partly this was mentioned in the proposal for API point six, that with that we can make endpoint for simple reverts, just pass the change set number to the API and get the new change set number back from it. And that would make for uh, buttons like in Wikipedia with difference and undoing, like on the website. It will be so simple. And uh, while we're at it, we can also add a thank you button, which I would, also very <laughs> which I would like very much. But again, that is also hard. <laughs> uh, you have to know uh, real sport. You have to uh, pass the people who watch our API. And why not just you know the third way? Don't touch real sport and API at all. Like, thanks to Andy, changing API would be much simpler in future. But currently, if you want something done, like, uh, for example, downloading a large batch of data, which current API doesn't allow you, you have to make something yourself. Like, download the whole data, whole planet, to a server and write anything you like on any language you like with all the API methods you want, uh, like for, that allows you to filter data by tags or download entire countries. Basically, that's what Roland, author of the Overpass API, did. He has made Overpass API to cover the drawbacks of OSM API, and it evolved since then. Now it's all this big tool with its own query language that you have to study, and that can do different things besides querying, like calculating statistics, and producing even augmented difference files for changes inside the region, which almost solves the issue of change set monitoring. And some tools, like OSM Cha by Willy, uses uh, our pass to query our changes, because then you get geometries. Then you can look at change set and see with your eyes what has been changed. That looks pretty well. I believe some of you have tried OSM Cha and it looks amazing. It has great filtering and so on. But still, it, it has got its drawbacks. Like, I sometimes get uh, arguments, uh, complaints for my OSM Strict tool, a tool that helps users map every day. It has mapping suggestions. And one of them is to draw something in Child and another something in Kamchatka. 
and the resulting change set covers the whole world. And that suggestion shows the issue with our change sets and it gets quite a lot of complaints. Why do, does it get it? Because uh, we've got a data model. Nodes, ways, and relations. And like language sometimes defines the world view, our data model defines, again, how you see the world. Like I look on the street and I see nodes for trees, ways for roads, and relations for bus roads. It's uh, the same for uh, our tools. Uh, yeah, and if we had different data model, like around API point three, we switched from segments, which connected two points, to ways, which connected lo lots of points. And if we still had that, a road, not just a very long way, but a set of segments, you won't have a frustration splitting the roads, because they will be all split by default. And uh, I believe we won't have duplication of tags like name and highway class. They will go on relations, so the roads will become not this thing with lots of attributes, but a physical thing. And relations will carry uh, virtual attributes of the road, and our view of the world will be different because we will split in our minds like things to physical and virtual. And your tools are defined by API. And in the regard for monitoring changes, overpass is defined and OSM chat are defined by change set IDs. Like or to get this big change set with just a few changes, uh, OSM chat has to download all the changes in the world for an hour and then filter them by, by a number. And you can see why that might be a problem. So, as versions, change sets do not help as much in monitoring and reverting change sets. So, nobody should rely on them. They are just arbitrary things that group edits and nobody even regards change sets as something meaningful. Some people just click save after every edit, like draw a building, saved, draw another, saved. And that is also an issue for monitoring tools. People complain about that. When changes don't work, why don't we look at individual changes, like smaller ones? Uh, like we need to go to split all this to the smallest possible changes. Like move the load, edit the tag, change the weight geometry. And these split would allow us to do so much more because individual change, like adding a tag, can be easily reverted. We know what was and we know what is. And these changes can be grouped. Uh, uh, not by arbitrary identifiers, but for example, we can group uh, them by area, changes in Heidelberg. Group them by timestamps, changes yesterday in Heidelberg, by user, changes by Frederick yesterday in Heidelberg, and by edit type, like edit trees in Heidelberg yesterday by Frederick. And, yeah. and by grouping changes, it becomes so easier to work with them. It doesn't matter if a user has uploaded a change set with a thousand buildings or a thousand change sets with a single build, building each. It doesn't matter if they edited Chell and Kamchatka in a single change set or in two. You just uh, look at individual changes. And it would allow for human readable descriptions, which was an experiment long ago, but it didn't work for some reason, but it can do. Human readable descriptions uh, can be automated. We don't need to rely on users to write what change set is about. Like, uh, some time ago, I worked in MapsMe, and uh, I did automatic change set commenting. 
Maps Me is very simple. It can do edits like edit two shops, update the restaurant, so change set comments describe perfectly what was inside the change set. And I still was getting complaints that comments should not describe what's inside the change set. They should describe why a user has made the change. Why do you edit OpenStreetMap? I laughed at this at the moment and I use it as a sarcastic slide in some of the presentation, but now I feel like they were onto something. Like, uh, why we can have what using just algorithms by looking inside the change set. Like, you uh, can group your theoretical atomic changes and see that uh, it's not a bounding box and edit dozen nodes and edit some ways with this text. You can have better human readable descriptions like edit two buildings in child, one building in Kamchatka, and change that comment why. Because I did an OSM strict task. And with these two strings, you don't even have to look inside the change set. You know what happened. And by grouping, by filtering, you can have a constant stream of changes that you can understand. You don't have to put them on the map even. That's what looking at atomic changes can do. So, for this to work, we need to stop considering the data model as the one and only truth. We need to stop relying on things that are in the data model but don't work. We can improve them via API data model, via API as an interface, but we need to work with the data now. And for that, we need to stop seeing trees as nodes, roads as ways, and bus roads as relation, but see things for what they really are. Like changes, not as part of change sets, not as versions, but as individual changes that, uh, for what they are. We need to think beyond the data model, and with that, we need to make better tools that help people, not just rehash the data model. Thank you. Thank you, Ilya. Uh, so, questions? Benny, at the back. Guys coming behind you, wait for the microphone, and then the live stream can hear. Hey, uh, thanks a lot, Ilya. That was, that was great. I loved, I loved a lot of the things. The parent ID is just amazing. I wish we could have that. My question is a bit about the practically, if you have any ideas of how one would do this arbitrary grouping. I've always been uncomfortable with the idea of chain side grouping. We were, I worked on OSM Cha and this is something that always made me uncomfortable. Like why are we grouping by chain sets? It's completely arbitrary, but it seemed also like the only practical way to do it because if you stored every atomic change in the database and allowed a user to choose their own grouping, it just became a hard, it became a scale problem. Like what backend do we use that we can filter all these millions of changes and allow the user to do their own arbitrary grouping. Do you have, do you have any ideas of how one would actually design a backend that would store each atomic change and then allow users to group in whatever they way they want to group and not be forced into this arbitrary change set grouping? I, yeah, if. Right, thanks for that. I didn't get most of the question, <laughs> but uh, I know for sure that while atomic change sets sound easier, like moving things, they will take a lot of storage and they will be very hard to implement because you have, will have to think not in uh, ways that are defined, by, that you are used to, like node nodes. You have to think what user wants, not what uh, data gives you. And yeah, it will take a lot of storage uh, because we had an attempt on, on that with uh, OpenStreetMap watch list by Pavel Paprota. And well, it, it worked quite slow and <laughs> it took a lot of space. But these are technical problems. Technical issues are solvable. 
it's uh, people issues that are hard to solve. And assessing our changes, reversing them is more of a people issue than a technical issue. Cool. And oh, right by the microphone. Yep, you there. <laughs> With the um, atomic changes, would there still be a way for users to indicate that several changes belong together in our uh, unit? Like, uh, if you remove a tag from one object and add it to another one, and what you actually want to indicate that the tag moved to the other object, and that is actually one operation. Uh, yeah, I agree that splitting changes into theoretical items is not easy. Because when you move a node, it can result in multiple changes, if I get it correctly. Like, uh, uh, you can simultaneously move an individual node, like a traffic light, and then change geometry of one road, change geometry of another road, and uh, also change tags. This may need to go in hand with other changes, like version and stuff. I didn't have, think about that all that deep, I, but, uh, well, just did some experiments. We need to think about it. I, I don't have concrete solutions. If I had them, then I'll just give you an URL to a better reverter, and <laughs> it doesn't work like that. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, this guy a bit further back. Hi, I'm Vincent from JOSAM. So I fully agree with everything you said. Um, but like you said, the biggest problem is not a technical problem, it's a people problem. The hardest thing is to get motivated people to do it. And I think we can't be sure uh, it will be entirely feasible before we start actually coding it. So. Did you talk about this to other people before this conference? And did you find anyone motivated to start a prototype and see if we can do something concretely? We don't have a prototype. We have some uh, initial attempts at that, like uh, I have a tool called Simple Reverter, which uh, you just pass number of change set and it reverts it without asking anything. But it's very simple, but it builds on some of the principles I'm talking about. Like, uh, it tries to split the change set into atomic changes and reward them. But it's very raw, it still depends on the data model. I talked about this at a uh, few other conferences, local ones, like in Russian and stuff. But, uh, yeah, we would need people on board, we, we might need to plan it or just draft it. This is the first time basically I'm speaking about it on an international conference, so I really hope this sparks some ideas in some of you and maybe you can you know, start something or just contact me, Vincent, Quincy, somebody who knows about data model <laughs> and we can make something. Cool. I think we'll just go, this will be the last one down there. Yeah. Um, Mike Fence is behind you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, yeah. <coughs> Sorry for that. Um, Isn't it a tiny, really bit misleading referring to the Wikipedia referred and uh, diff? Uh, mechanism um, in the context of OpenStreetMap because the difficulty is not really reverting a change set that just happened, it's reverting one which you notice half a year down the road that it's broken and naturally you have all the the related information or related changes which other people have made in the meantime and references to, to the objects there, which is what makes reverting really difficult in, in OSM. And Wikipedia actually doesn't have that because the articles themselves are largely self-contained. Yeah, I agree the example was uh, a bit 
simpler things could be. And it, unlike Wikipedia, where articles are independent, and it's easy to revert any change because the linear and opposite map is, again, the intertwined, messy ball of geodata. And reverting anything uh, pulls all the data from all the opposite maps only. But again, uh, people who edit Wikipedia, I guess, uh, are used to concept of merging like three-way merge. When you add something or revert something and something was added before, so you just take uh, data from three sources and make them one. And we don't have that in OpenStreetMap because we can have like a hundred-way merge, like it usually happens. Like hundred people change something and now you need to revert it and you don't know where to start. But going to atomic changes means that uh, for each change, you have previous state, next state, and merges will be much simpler. And that might help in reverting. Yeah, case like that. that. That's what I use in my simple reverter. It's basically a tool for three-way merge of old data and new data. And it can do really all reverts. If somebody edit a tag on a way and then people edit it this way around, then it can just remove the tag and the revert will go quite well. So yeah, going to atomic changes will simplify reverts in that way. Okay, cool. I've got a notice, but first of all, thank you, Ilya, for that talk. Thank you.